All right, this is Encounters with the Nagual by Armando Torres. This section is called The Three Pronged Nagwals. The rule is final, but its design and configuration are in constant evolution. But unlike evolutionists who view the adaptations of life as haphazard, accumulation of genetic mutations, seers know there is nothing random about the rule. They see how a command of the eagle in the form of a wave of energy shakes the lineages of power from time to time producing new stages in sorcery. A more exact way of describing it is to assume that all possible variations of the rule are contained in a womb of potential and what changes over time is the degree of knowledge of the sorcerers, the degree that the sorcerers have of that totality and what emphasis they put on the particular portions of it. Such periods of change are reoccurrent, and they are represented by the number three. Why three, I asked. Because the old Toltecs associated the number three with the dynamics and renewal. They discovered that ternary formations, formations based on the number three, announce unexpected changes. The rule dictates that from time to time, a special kind of Nawal will appear in the lineages. A Nawal whose energy is not divided into four parts, but instead has only three compartments. Seers call them three-pronged Nawals. I asked him how they were different from the others. He answered, their energy is volatile. They are always moving, and because of that, they find it difficult to accumulate power. From the point of view of the lineages, their composition is faulty. They will never be true Nawals. In compensation, they lack the timidity and reservation that characterizes the classic Nawals, and they possess an unusual capacity to imp improvise and to communicate. We can say that the three-pronged Nawals are like the cuckoo birds, incubated in other birds and in other birds' nests. They are opportunists, but they are necessary. Unlike the Nawals of four points, whose freedom it is to pass unnoticed, those of three points are public personalities. They disclose secrets and cause fragmentation of the teachings, but without them, the lineages of power would have been extinguished a long time ago. Among the new seers, the rule is that the Nawal leaves a new party as a descendant. Some, due to their enormous energy surpluses, are able to help organize a second or third generation of seers. For example, the Nawal Elias Ulio lived long enough to create his successor's party and to have an influence on the following one. But this does not mean a fork in the lineage. All those groups were part of the same transmission line. On the other hand, the three-pronged Nawal is authorized to transmit his knowledge radially, which does lead to a diversification of the lineages. His luminous cocoon has a disintegrating effect on the group, which breaks the lineage structure of transmission and vomits a desire for change and action in warriors and an active disposition to be involved with their own fellow man. Was that what happened to you? I asked. That's what happened. Due to my luminous disposition, I don't have any qualms about leaving kernels of knowledge behind wherever I go. I know that I need an enormous quantity of energy to fulfill my task and that I can only obtain it from the masses. For that reason, I'm willing to broadcast the knowledge far and wide and transform and redefine its paradigms. The portion of the rule of the three-prong Nawal. As you know, my teacher became aware of the rule of the three-prong Nawal when he tried to analyze certain anomalies in the new group. Apparently, I could not get the tune with the rest of the apprentices. Then he paid me sufficient attention to see that I masked my energy configuration. Do you mean that Don Juan's seeing has been mistaken? Of course not. What was mistaken was his looking. To see is the final form of perception. There are no appearances, so it is not possible to be deceived. However, 
Due to the pressure he had exerted on me for years, my energy struggled to mold itself to his. That is common among apprentices. Since he was divided into four compartments, I also began to manifest a similar energetic weight in my actions. Once I was able to shake it off and shake off his influence, it took me almost 10 years of arduous work to do this. We discovered something astonishing. My luminosity had only three compartments. It didn't correspond to an ordinary modern person who only has two, nor did it correspond to a gnaw wall. This discovery caused great commotion in the group of seers, since they all saw it as a portent of profound change for the lineage. Then Don Juan went back to the tradition of his predecessors. He dusted off a forgotten aspect of the rule. He told me that the election of the Nawal cannot in any way be considered as a personal whim, since it is the spirit who chooses the successor of a lineage at all times. Therefore, energetic anomalies was part of the command. Faced with my urgent questioning, he assured me that a messenger would appear in due time and explain to me the function of my presence as a three-pronged Nawal. Years later, during a visit to one of the rooms in the National Museum of Anthropology and History, I observed a native dressed in the old-fashioned Tuhar Haramara costume, who seemed to have the most absorbing interest in one of the exhibition pieces. He examined it from all sides and demonstrated such a total concentration that it made me curious, and I went closer to look. When he saw me, the man spoke to me and began to explain the meaning of a group of excellent, painstaking drawings sculpted into the stone. Then, while I meditated on what he had told me, I remembered Don Juan's promise and realized that this man had been an envoy from the spirit who had passed on to me the portion of the rule concerning the three-pronged wall. And what does that portion say? It affirms that just as the party has an energy matrix of the number 17, two narwhals, four female dreamers, four female stalkers, four male warriors, and three scouts, a lineage which is formed by a succession of parties, also has a structure of power of the number 52. The eagle's command is that every 52 generations of four pointed narwhals, there will appear a three-pronged narwhal who serves as a cathartic action for the propagation of the new four-point lineages. The rule also says that the three-pronged narwhals are destructive to the established order because their nature is neither creative nor nurturing and they have a tendency to enslave all those who surround them. It adds that to achieve freedom, these narwhals should do it alone because their energy is not tuned to guide groups of warriors. Like everything in the world of energy, the block of 52 generations is divided into two parts. The first 26 concerning themselves with expansion and the creation of new lines. The rest oriented towards conservation and isolation. This pattern of behavior has been repeating itself millennia after millennium. So sorcerers know that it is part of the rule. As a result of the activities of the three-pronged gnaw wall, the knowledge becomes widely known, and new cells of four-point gnaw walls are formed. From that starting point, lineages recapture the tradition of transmitting the teachings in a lineal form. How often do three-part gnaw walls appear? I asked. Approximately once per millennium. This is the age of my lineage.